ask if you would to take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to the Old Testament, uh, to the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 22. If you're using a pew Bible there, it's page 451. 2 Kings chapter 22. You know, the Bible, the Bible is full of uh, life stories, uh, stories of men and women, uh, the things that they uh, lived through, the things that they did. And those uh, walks on earth are there to teach us some lessons. You know, a lot of times you wonder, why, why do we have all of these people listed in the Bible? Why are there stories there? Uh, why are the things that happen to them? They're, because they're, they're there to teach us. And uh, every once in a while, God just kind of lets us look in on their lives a little bit uh, so that we can learn of them. We're, we're familiar with Abraham, right? I and mean, we did a long study on Abraham. Uh, you, you look at Abraham's life and you learn a lot of lessons from it. Uh, we'd like to take a look this morning because I think there are some real character lessons uh, from a man here in 2 Kings chapter 22. Uh, if you would like to do uh, some additional study, you will also find uh, a lot of a little additional information uh, about him in 2 Chronicles chapters 34 and 35. So I'd encourage you to read through those uh, this week, just kind of a, a give you a little bit more information the man that we're going to take a look at and learn some lessons from, uh, we're going to actually title this message, Spiritual Character Traits That We Should Have in Our Life. Spiritual Character Traits That We Should Have in Our Life. And we're going to be looking at King Josiah. Now, before uh, you, uh, we go any further, does anybody know how old King Josiah was when he began his reign? Eight years old. I want you to just envision that for a moment. Uh, so when you think about this, we're going to read about him here in 2 Kings chapter 22 in just a few moments. Uh, and then as I mentioned also in 2 Chronicles chapters 34 and 35. Some spiritual character traits uh, that we should have in our life. We're going to look at three of them specifically uh, as a result of his life. I want to begin though uh, in verse 1 of 2 Kings chapter 22. Uh, you'll notice that Josiah reigned there in Judah. It says he was 8 years old when he became king. And he reigned how many years? 31. Okay, now he was killed in battle. So at 39 years of age, it's not a very long life. And yet he accomplished a lot. And it's something that we uh, need to keep in mind and learn from today. His mother's name was Jedediah, the daughter of Adiah of Bozcraft. And I'm going to say this right now because we're going to read chapter 22 in a few minutes. You uh, please do not attempt to correct all of my pronunciation of these names. If you want to correct me, you can come up and read them. <laughs> it's very interesting. But verse 2, notice what it says about Josiah. He did what was right in the sight of the people. In the sight of the Lord. Now you notice that's all caps, right? That's the Lord Jehovah, God. He did everything that was right in the sight of God. He walked in all the ways of his father David. And he did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Now, by the way, he says his father, David, this is not a direct, uh, in other words, not a direct descendant of David, but in the throne, in the kingdom of the throne. Very interesting. I want to give you a little bit of historical background so that you can grab what's going on, if we could, uh, for a little bit. I mentioned earlier, he started his reign when he was eight years old. After David, King David died, his son took over the throne, and his name was... Solomon, all right, so Solomon reigned all of his years, and after Solomon died, there was a split, if you would, in the kingdom of Israel. So uh, at that, from that point on, you had the northern kingdom, which was still called Israel, had ten tribes, and then you had the southern kingdom, which was called Judah, which included the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. And if you remember from your Old Testament studies, uh, at one time on different sides of the Jordan River. Uh, it's interesting to me anyway that even back in this time, people couldn't get along. You know, they were still divided. Uh, there were things that divided them over the course of their time. One of the things that is notable though, one of the many traits is that almost all of the kings of Israel, almost all, did evil in the sight of God. And a lot of the kings of Judah, the same. There was a lot of, uh, just a lot of bad leadership. Go back to chapter 21 of 2 Kings for just a moment, just over a page. Notice if you would, <clears throat> here's Manasseh, all right? Now I want you to notice what's said about him. We'll just begin uh, in verse 2. He did evil 
in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Remember, they went into the promised land. They took over the promised land. They, all of these kings were taken. And Israel now it was, was, if you would, ruling. They were there, God of Israel, so on and so forth. And yet they took all of these pagan gods and they, they began to infiltrate the believer. Now, we could go off on a different message here, how important it is for you to always stay, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, with Halen, how important it is to stay focused on God's word, right? Uh, as our, our brother just prayed in his prayer as well. You know, it's so important to understand the teaching of God's word. Continuing in verse 3, notice what Manasseh did. He rebuilt the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. Hezekiah was good. He did a lot of good. He raised up this guy. Manasseh comes in. He has altars for Baal. He has wooden images. Even as Ahab, king of Israel, had done, he worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. So he wasn't serving and worshipping the true God. He was worshipping with the God of the stars, the God of the angels, the heavens, and so on and so forth. Verse 4. He also built altars in the house of the Lord. So he put these heathen idols and these heathen worships even in the house of the Lord. Uh, and, and even though he had, he, he would call it the house of God, so on and so forth, there was a lot of infiltration, obviously, of things that were not of God. Verse 6, he made his sons pass through the fire. He practiced soothsaying, used witchcraft, consulted spiritists and mediums. How, how, would you, how would you respond if a pastor did that in his church? All right, the kings were the leaders, right? So here we have these kings leading the children of Israel, leading the nations down the wrong path spiritually. Notice it says again in the end of verse 6 there in First Kings or 2 Kings 21, he did much evil in the sight of the Lord. You notice the difference between there and verse 2? What's, what word is added in verse 6? The word much, right? A lot more descriptive. He did much evil. He had carved images. You can continue to read all of that if you would. Go down to verse 10 of 1 Kings chapter 21. The Lord spoke by his servants, the prophets, and he said, Because Manasseh has done these abominations, he has acted more wickedly than all the Amorites who were in the land, who were before him. He also made Judah sin with his idols. Therefore says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such calamity upon Jerusalem and Judah that whoever hears it, both his ears will tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line on and on and on. The judgment of God that was going to come because of what Manasseh did. You think, well, things might get a little bit better. Go to the end of chapter 21. Look at verses 19 and 20. Now along comes Ammon. Ammon's his son. He was 22 years old when he became king. He reigned only two years. Notice verse 20. Was he any better than his dad? Absolutely not. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord as his father Manasseh had done. He walked in the ways of his father and he served the idols that his father had served and worshipped them. He forsook the Lord God. Let me ask you this question. Just something for you to ponder. When you think about the fact that you as a father, you as a dad, you as a mom, we're raising our kids. More than likely, the way that we live is the way they're going to live. Always remember that. Is that always the example? No. We're going to see that a little bit later on. But most of the time, the way you live, your faithfulness, if you're faithful in church, going to church, studying God's word, worshiping God, most of the time, your children are going to follow through on that if you're, if you're doing it with them. Right? It's not always the case, and we know that God has to continue to work in people's lives. But if we're faithful, God says he'll be faithful. All right, And we continue to pray for those, those families, those members of, of families that, that aren't following through exactly on the things that we're doing. We still pray for them, right? We still work for them. We still do everything we can to try to see them come back to where God would be. Um, I want you, you don't need to turn there, but in 2 Chronicles chapter 27, there was another king mentioned there. His name was Jotham. And this is a sad, sad scenario. 2 Chronicles chapter 27, verse 2. King Jotham did what was right in God's eyes. But listen to what the rest of the verse says. The people still acted corruptly. 
Let me ask you a question. Have we not seen that in the course of generations in the church as well as in our society today? Even when people do what is right in God's eyes, many times because of all of the past sinfulness and the sinful ways of man, they go back and live corruptly. It's a very sad statement. You know, here's a man who tried to live the way God wanted him to, but the people still were corrupt. All right, so let's go to 2 Kings chapter 22. It kind of gives you a little bit of a background. And we want to look at some of the spiritual character traits that we can learn from Josiah. I'm going to ask you to follow as I read, just so that you can get uh, chapter 22. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to read the entire chapter for us, so that you can get the context. Josiah, beginning in verse 1, 2 Kings 22. Josiah was 8 years old when he became king. He reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jediah, the daughter of Adihu of Bozkath. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Now it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah. So that would make him how old, mathematicians? 26. Okay, very good. You're awake. Okay, it came to pass in the 18th year that the king sent Shaphan the scribe, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, to the house of the Lord, saying this, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest that he may count the money which has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people. Let them deliver it into the hand of those doing the work, who are the overseers in the house of the Lord. Let them give it to those who are in the house of the Lord, doing the work to repair the damages of the house. Give it to the carpenters and the builders and the masons, so that they can buy timber and hew stone to repair the house. Speaking about the house of God. However, there need be no accounting made with them of the money delivered into their hand because they deal faithfully. The aspect of trust, very important in the church as well as in all of our lives. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Now that's kind of sad, isn't it? You know, they, they, they hadn't been following, they hadn't been reading the scriptures, they didn't have the book, they hadn't been using God's law in his words, <coughs> and it was lost, if you would. So while they're doing these repairs, they find this book, and the book of the law, it's just like you find in your Bible, after it's been sitting on the shelf all week, and you blow the dust off of it. That's what's happened. Continue, verse 9. So Shaphan the scribe went to the king, bringing the king word. He says, your servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, they've delivered it into the hand of those who do the work who oversee the house of the Lord, and then Shaph and the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest gave me a book. He didn't even call it God's law. Gave him a book, and Shaph had read it before the king. Now it happened, when the king heard the words of the book of the law, what did he do? Circle verse 11. We'll come back to it in a few moments. Verse 12. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam the son of Shaph, Achbor the son of Micaiah, Shaphan the scribe, and Isaiah, Isaiah the a servant of the king, saying this, Go inquire the Lord for me, for the people, for all of Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is aroused against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book, to do according to all that is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam Akbor, Shaphan, Isaiah, went to Hudiah the prophetess, the wife of Shalem, the son of Tizba, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. She dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke with her. Doing okay on the names? I'm reading them fast so that you can't tell whether I'm right or not. Verse 15, then she said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, that's the king, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place, on its inhabitants, and all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me. They burned incense to other gods. They might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be aroused against this place and shall not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, in this manner you shall speak to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which you have heard. Josiah, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse. You tore your clothes, you wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. And surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers. You shall be gathered in your grave in what? Peace. 
and your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place. So they brought word to the king. Now I want you to just think about that for a few moments there. You know, Josiah, he could have just kind of thrown his hands up in the air and said, you know, I, I've done the right thing. God's promised me I'm not going to have to go through this judgment that the children of Israel are going to go through. I don't have to go through all of this. But what you're going to find out in Josiah's life in chapter 23 is he begins to take steps to change things in the nations. And so as God's child and he's used of God, even though he knew that he didn't have to go through all of the judgments that were coming, he still did what was right. So I want to give you three spiritual lessons to think about that can be applied to our lives. The first one is found in verse 2 of 2 Kings chapter 22. We'll read it again. Verse 2. Josiah did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Now I want you to think about those three. Can those three things be said of you? Can those three things be said of me? If I'm going to have the character that God wants me to do, am I going to first of all do what was right in God's eyes? And sometimes doing what's right in God's eyes is not the easy thing to do. Right? It's not always the easy thing to do. But we do what was right. Notice he also says he followed God just as he had King David who had done. He says, he says, I followed him in all of his ways. He did all of the things of David that were right before God. Don't separate the second part of that from the first. All right? Because we know David sinned, right? We understand that. But he did all what was right in God's eyes. And notice the third thing. Let me ask you this question. How could it be said of you and I that we don't turn from the right or the left? In other words, we're walking down that path that God has called us to. We know it's a narrow path according to the scriptures. And he says he didn't turn to the left or the right. You know what happens to most of us in our, in our daily walk? Often in our lives. We get, we get so entangled with the affairs of this life that we sometimes take our focus off of doing what God says is right. Jobs become more important. Making money becomes more important. Doing this, our status, whatever it might be, becomes more important. And we, and we start to, if we would, we start to kind of lower our standards a little bit as a Christian. We start to lower the way that we know God wants us to live. And that's not said of Josiah. You know, it, just think about the fact that he had to desire He's living in the midst of an evil nation. Church, these people are not worshiping God at all. They're not following anything of God's law. And yet, Josiah had in his heart this desire to, to want to follow God. And even though he only lived 39 years, it says he never wavered from living the right way. Would you like to have that said of you in your life? Um, you know, one, it's one thing to get excited when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's another thing to continue living that walk with him your entire life. And, and the question is going to be whether or not we can do that. Um, <clears throat> remember the song, and we've, we've sung it before, we've referenced it before as, all, as well. May all who come behind us find us what? Faithful. Faithful. Doesn't mean that we're perfect. None of us are perfect. All right. If, if, you, if you believe that you are perfect, talk to your spouse. Or talk to somebody else and they'll let you know real quick you're not. All right? But it's one thing, you know, it's one thing to be real excited about following God and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's another thing to do like Josiah and live your life the way God says you should live it your entire life. We all fail, do we not? But that needs to be a spiritual character trait. That we are going to follow God and we're going to do what God says, just like Josiah says. Um, you know, we mentioned Halen, uh, in our, you know, as a, as a graduate, uh, and this is true of all of our graduates, true of all of us uh, in life, but you know, it's so important that you continue to follow <clears throat> all of the teaching that you've had from God's Word, uh, continue to stay in God's Word so that you are directed by Him. It's, too, it's very easy in this day and age, is it not, to go to the left or the right, away from God's, God's call on our life. Uh, I think we could all agree to that. Lesson number one. Lesson number one. He did what was right, and the spiritual character trait is very simply. He started out right in his life, and he finished right. 
That's, that's a real character trait for the Christian. Lesson number two, look at verse 11. We read it a little bit earlier, I asked you to circle it. <clears throat> Excuse me, verse 11 of chapter 22. Here's what we read. It happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law. So now they come in, he reads the book of the law, which was written by whom? Well, God. Moses, right? So the books of the law are now, they bring the scrolls out and they read them. You guys, you know, sometimes we have a hard time with a service that goes over an hour. Could you imagine sitting there and having the first five books of the Bible read to you? You might be like Peter and having the guy fall asleep and fall off the, off the roof. Notice verse 11. When he heard the commandments of God, you think back to the things that are in there about following God, worshiping God. Remember, remember even the Ten Commandments, all of the things that are in the first five books of the Bible about doing it God's way, following God. He said, after he heard all of those things and he realized that as a nation they were not doing it, what did he do in the end of verse 11? It says he tore his clothes, he tore his robe. Now think a little bit about that. That when, when you read about that happening in Scripture, we probably don't practice that today, very few people, uh, if any. But when, when, that, when that happened, it was usually because of two reasons. One, like with David, when his son died, he tore his clothes, it says, he sat in sackcloth and ashes and so on. There was, it was a, it, a sign of deep sorrow because of what was going on in your life. And that's one thing that's used. The other one is very simply uh, throughout Scripture, we see it here with Josiah. <clears throat> when he realized that there was so much sin in the camp, it just hurt him so desperately that he was ashamed before God. It says he tore his robe. Now keep in mind, the robe that the king wore was, was not, had a lot of status to it, just wearing the garb. So here he is making this statement, if you would, uh, about the sin of the children of Israel. I want to I ask you to think about, about this. When you and I, when we read the Bible... <laughs> When God uses a, a, a pastor or a teacher or something, you know, somebody we see on television who's preaching something from God's Word, when God convicts you about something in your heart, you know you're wrong. <laughs> do, you, do you have the same reaction that Josiah did? You know, maybe physically you don't rip your clothes. But he didn't justify the sin of Judah. He didn't say, you know what, God, let me explain to you why these people are the way they are. He didn't come up with all kinds of excuses. He didn't say, these people are not following God's path, but, but let me tell you why. That, that, that's the reaction that we sometimes have when God convicts us. We, we come up with some type of an excuse. That, well, here's, here's why I'm doing this. Here's why I'm not faithful in this area of my life. Here's why I'm not following your commands, God. Uh, here's why I'm not studying your word. Uh, don't you know, God, I'm, I'm really tired at night. Don't you know I'm really tired? I got too much to do during the day, so I don't really spend much time studying your word. Do you, you understand what's happening? This, this is what happens to most of us. And, and if God convicts us about something in our life, I wonder what your reaction is. I wonder what my reaction is. When God opens up his word and he begins to speak to me, do I excuse my sin? Do I find a reason to say it's okay to live that way or to not have the same the directives that God has? He doesn't try to clarify things to God at all. What does he do? He tears his clothes. And in the coming verses, what you saw, he repented. He said, God, here's what we did wrong. Here's what we need to do right. And, and when, when God speaks to our heart and, and we make God's word the standard, it's not just kind of an add-on. Um, you know, just kind of speaking this as plainly as I can, I think too many times we, we want to accept the tough things of God's word whenever it's not hard for us. But if God, if God is convicting you about something in your life, whatever it might be, Trust that you'll have the courage to be like Josiah and, and you will, you'll be open to God speaking to you. 
instead of putting up a wall and uh, coming up with some type of an excuse, Josiah was very tender to the word of the Lord. He listened to the word of God when it was read and it affected him. So that brings you to lesson three. Because it affected him, he changed his life. And he changed the life of this nation. Why don't you look at chapter 23. We're not going to take time to read uh, this whole chapter. But I, I would encourage you to read it uh, this week, even this afternoon. In 2 Kings chapter 23, let's just go to verse 2 to begin with. So he, he gathers all these people together. They've heard the word of the Lord. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah, with all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. This was not just a, hey, if you want to come, come. All of the nation. He brought the priests, the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of the Lord. So he listened to all of this, right? It affected him. He repented. And now he goes out. Now he knows he's not going to be judged. Remember we read that earlier? He knows he's not going to go through the judgment. He could have just thrown his hands up and said, you know what? I've got it made. I'm going to heaven. Everything's fine. No. He was concerned about the rest of the nation. So he gets them all together. And you'll notice... Did Hilkiah the high priest read the book of the law to the children, or to the nation? In verse 2 here, who read it to him? Look at it again. Who read the book of the law? Who read the covenant to him? King Josiah. He read in their hearing all the words of the book, verse 2. Then the king stood, verse through, verse 3, by a pillar... And he made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart, with all of his soul, to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people took a stand for the covenant. This king got up, this leader got up, he read what God's word had to say. He said, here's the judgment of God that's going to come upon this nation. Here's the way we're supposed to be doing things by God's word. And I want you to know that we are going to make a decision to do what was right. Now, I'm sure there were people there that said, you know what? We really like these other God. We like these other things that are going on in our life. And they may not have, they may not have followed everything that he said. But King Josiah said, I'm going to take a stand for God's word. And church, that's the way we need to be as a body of believers, right? We want to stand on the truth of God's word. And you follow God's word, and you allow the leaders to take you. Now notice in the case of Josiah, what did he do? Begins in verse 4, all right? In verse 4, the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, the priest of the second order, the doorkeepers, to take out of the temple of the Lord all the articles that were made for Baal, all the items that were there for Asherah, and for all of the host of heaven. And he did what with it? He had a big bonfire. So think about this practically. I remember back when I was a teenager, there was a, a lot of, of talking about um, the evils of music. Now, we don't have that today, do we? But I can remember we had, we had burning parties for teenagers. We would bring records back, I know, you young people, a record is this round thing. You put it on, and it would play music just like a CD does. All of our tapes from from the rock groups like Kiss and all of the other groups, you know, Kings and Satanics, or all these types of groups and so on and so forth. All of these, all of this music that had nothing that was Christian-like at all, and it led us down long paths. And I can remember at big bonfires. Any of you remember participating in any of those? Some of you older people? Okay, I see one hand. I won't mention your name, Carrie. But anyway, we have this big, they had these big bonfires, and you would burn all of these musics and CD, not CDs, tapes and, and records and so on, because the music that was on them was not godly. All right, so that's a practical picture of what he did here. He got all of these idols together, and so he took all of us. Think about this, church. He's setting an example, but let me ask you the question for you. If there's something in your life that is sinful, there's some act in your life, there's something in your life that isn't what it ought to be, 
Okay? Whether it be things that are keeping you from being in God's word or being in his house or, you know, giving to the Lord, all of those types of things, all the things that you know you should be doing as a Christian, sharing God's word, whatever they might be, the things that are keeping you from doing that, you pile them all up and you burn them and you say, okay, I'm not going to follow those ways anymore. You see, what this boils down to is there was no lip service on Josiah's part. And there are a lot of times as Christians, we're, we can service God with our lips, but we don't service him with our heart. And that was the difference with Josiah. Look at verse 5. <laughs> he, he took the priests, <clears throat> these priests, that were supposed to be doing the things of God, but they were burning incense to Baal. And, and he took all of these priests, and he took all of these images, and, and he killed them. He got rid of the priests. Down in verse 14 of chapter 23, he broke in pieces the sacred pillars. He cut down the wooden images and filled their places with whom? The bones of men. Those who had been doing the things that were contrary to God's word. The question I would ask us today as we think about this, change it. You know, it's one thing to recognize when God convicts you of something. And you, you were, but it's another thing to repent of it and to change and have a changed life as a result of it. Josiah's life was changed. The question I have for you is very simply this, and for me. Are there things in my life, are there idols in my life that God wants me to get rid of, but I'm not? If you're gonna, if you're gonna have the spiritual character traits of Josiah, you're going to be willing to get rid of that which is keeping you from having the walk that you should have with God. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, sometimes that's a tough, tough decision because we live in the flesh, don't we? Paul says we're supposed to live in the spirit, in Galatians, but we have a tendency to live our life in the flesh because we're concerned about fleshly things because we're humans. God says the most important thing is the spiritual part of your life. Josiah is proof that you can remain faithful to God your entire life. Do we fail? Absolutely. You might think that Josiah was faithful because his dad led him in the right way. But you go back and read chapter 21. You know who Josiah's dad was? King Ammon. King Ammon was horrible in the sight of God. He didn't have this King Josiah didn't have the, the example of, of a godly father, of somebody who did things God's way. Let me make this application in closing. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you're listening to God's word and you say, you know what? It's too late for me. I, I've messed things up in my life. Um, it's never too late, folks, to follow the Lord and to do things God's way. You, you all sitting here today remember, obviously, what happened to the thief that was on the cross, right? At the very last moment of his life, he called upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does Christ say? Today you will be what? With me in paradise. It doesn't matter what your life has been like. It doesn't matter what you may have done in your life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Right? Not you might be saved. You will be saved. And once that heart changes, then as God's child... As I believe by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that salvation, that understanding that God has saved me from the wrath of eternity in hell, my life is different. doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. Maybe as a believer, uh, you're here today or you're listening online and you say, you know what? Uh, I've really messed things up as a Christian. I've hurt my testimony. Um, I'm not living the way God wants me to. I'm not doing the things that God wants me to. Listen, it is never too late for you. It is never too late for any of us to repent of our sin, to change, ask God for forgiveness, repent, and change your life for God's glory. It's never too late. Never too late. I want you to notice in closing, verse 3 of chapter 23. This is very important. The last part of verse 3, it says... After he read all the things in the law, sometimes we it's easy to overlook a, a sentence. Don't overlook the last sentence in verse 3. All the people took a stand for the covenant. What did they do? 
they stood and said, we're going to do things God's way. Here's one man, Josiah, one man that did what was right in God's eyes. He started right, he finished right, he was open to the word of God, God spoke to his heart, it was tender, and then he changed things. All it takes is one man or woman of God to do things right in their family, and then as a result of it, it can affect the rest of them that are in the family. You can affect more people than what you know. You can reach out as a result of all of these people stood for the covenant of God. It's never too late, believer, to start living for God. So if, if you have something in your life that God is convicting of you, might it be said that you did what was right in the eyes of God, and you, you got things right with God. And as a result of that, you went on then to live a life in the years that you have left to praise God. Let's be Josiahs. That's what we need is a church full of Josiahs. We're going to do what's right in God's eyes. We're going to be faithful to God, and God will bless you. Do you believe that, church? I trust that you do. You know, the end of verse 3 says they took a stand for the covenant. So I'm going to ask you as a church, let's stand. And, and, and by doing so to, together, as we close our service today, say, you know what? I'm going to live by the standards of God's word. I'm going to, I'm going to do what God's word has to say. And I would challenge you to, to stand with us together uh, as we think about that this morning. Father, I just pray for our church. I pray, Lord, for each of these individuals here, those that might be listening online, that, Father, we would live for you, that we would stand on the word of God, and we would live and do what God has called us to do. Might we be Josiahs and show these spiritual character traits? Might we start right and finish right? And Father, if, if we fail, uh, if, if our life isn't where it needs to be, help us to understand what forgiveness is all about as we talked about so many times in studying your word. And then, Father, as we repent and change those things in our life, we repent of where we've gone wrong, and now we change our life, even as Josiah did with the nation, that, Father God, we would have an impact then on others that are around us as well. Might this church be an example and a testimony of what God can do uh, in the lives of his believing people. And we'll give you the praise and thanks for that. Um, let's, let's just close our service by singing that chorus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my Lord. You're great, my soul, you're grateful for being a believer. I trust that you are. May God then challenge us uh, to live for him. Let's sing that chorus together. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Grateful for the salvation in Christ. I trust that you are. Father God, might we go from your house and might we be the Josiahs that you've called us to be. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. 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 Lord, go with you today. Don't forget, ladies.